Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Unit 1, Basic Economic Concepts, and here we're on Resource Allocation and Economic Systems. What we're really talking about is different economic systems that we can have to allocate our resources. But, as we get into this, guys, I want to just take it aside for a second. Guys, economists generally think about things of value as being goods and services. That's right, goods and services are things of value. Now, I know that sounds materialistic, and I want to say, guys, us economists, we do know there are things that are more important than goods and services. Love, right? Joy, compassion, empathy. There are definitely things of value that are not goods and services. But that, you know, the study of those things falls outside of economics for the most part. However, economists are focused on goods and services, and it's not bad to think, hey, those are things of value. Guys, when you think about it, your education, healthcare, your home, the infrastructure, transportation, those are all goods and services. In fact, I take, I'd say it this way. If you're kind of thinking about like, what kind of good I can do in the world, what can I do in the world, here's things that people think about. Hey, can I bring more clean water to people? Hey, that's a good or service. Can I uh, get more access to healthcare for people? That's a good or service. Can I get more access to education? That's a good or service. Can I get better sanitation in their cities and in their neighborhoods? Once again, a good or service. When you start thinking about the ways that you want to do good in the world, oftentimes, guys, that is providing goods and services to people. Okay, so it's not too bad to say, hey, these things of value are goods and services. Okay, and that's kind of interesting how I want you to think about that as we go in to this video right here. We've got three major questions in economics, okay? What are the things of value we're going to produce? Again, what do I mean by that? What are the goods and services that we're going to produce? How are we going to produce these things of value, okay? Are we going to produce them with a maybe a government, a public sector actor, or are we going to produce them with a private sector actor? Who is going to get to consume these things of value? Who's going to have access and be able to consume these things of value, okay? These are the big economic questions. Again, they're, they're big enough to repeat. What goods and services are we going to produce? How are we going to produce those goods and services? And for whom are we producing them? Who is going to get to consume these goods and services? Now, as we go into the different economic systems, there's two polar opposite systems that sit at two different sides of the spectrum. One is the capitalist free market system, and the other one is the socialist centrally planned economic systems. Let's talk about this one first. Let me start with the word capitalist, okay? Now, what that means when we say, hey, that's a capitalist system, is that means that the means of production are owned by private sector actors, by individuals, okay? That it's not the government that owns the means of production, but the means of produ production, that ownership of those means of production, that is our households and individuals, okay? That's who's owning that stuff. Now, free market systems, what we're talking about there is we, in a free market system, we have decentralized actors, okay, meaning they're not coordinating with each other, so decentralized actors acting in their own self-interest. That's right, on the supply side, decentralized actors acting in their own self-interest, and on the demand side, decentralized actors acting in their own self-interest. Now, it's kind of interesting, as you hear those, the, the way that I'm speaking about that, you certainly might rub you a little bit the wrong way, right? Oh my gosh, everybody just acting in their own self-interest. Could that be a good way to devise an economic system that can answer those questions? Now, as we ponder that, let's go over to this side. Socialist centrally planned economic systems. Socialism. What we're talking about there is when the government owns the means of production, that the government takes ownership of the means of production. If you have a true socialist society in all ways, it is a, it's not just partial socialist, a full socialist society, guys, there is no private property. All property is owned by the state, okay? And, but for this video, I want you to mainly think all means of production owned by the state. Now, centrally planned economic system. Here, we're going to have the public sector actor take the initiative. We're going to have bureaucrats figuring out how, you know, figuring out these questions. What are we going to produce? How are we going to produce them? And who are they going to go to? It's going to be bureaucrats in a government system trying to answer those questions. Now, big question arises, right? Well, what are their incentives? Are they trying to do the public good? Or is there private incentives that are going to sneak in even for these government officials? Is there going to be problems with corruption that might enter in? These are also things that we have to think about on this side of the ledger. So, these are the two polar extremes. Now, most economies, not here, 
not here, okay? In fact, I'd say there's no economy that's here. Maybe you could argue North Korea, maybe right here, but for the most part, no economies are right here. Everybody's some mixed one, right? Everybody's falling somewhere in between, and we're all somewhat trying to decide what is the best mix of this, okay? Let's just think about something like education. Well, is it okay to have decentralized actors deciding all of these questions, acting in their own self-interest? Well, a lot of people say, well, no, not for K through 12 education. And some people say not for uh, education above 12, and maybe even preschool, it shouldn't be that way. And so we have all kinds of government intervention into those systems. Yet, we still do have some private schools out there. And, and the university level, there's still a lot of private universities. Pre-K, still a lot of private education. So it's a very mixed bag. Then you think of something like fast food, or, you know, should that be centrally planned, or is that okay to be completely done in this capitalist free market way? And so there's all kinds of goods that you can go through in different type of industries. What is the way to do it? What's the way to do insurance? What's the way to do healthcare? What's the way to do uh, cell phones? What is the way to do these all these different industries? And we can list all kinds of other ones, right? And we have to kind of think about what is the good aspects of this, how can we leverage this, and hey, isn't there some way that we need some oversight of, from our centrally planned officials into these questions? And so we have to decide for ourselves where we think our, we should be on the spectrum or where our country should be on the system. What is the best economic system to answer these three questions? I hope you keep your mind open. I hope you do see that markets do have some pretty good power to bring about productive efficiency and things like that, and even some level of distributive efficiency, which we'll define in other videos. But I hope you also understand that markets can fail and that government can add value. And oftentimes there's many goods that the private sector completely does a bad job at providing. National defense comes to mind right off the bat. And so I want you to think about these things in a very complex way and then try to figure out what type of mixed economy makes the most sense to you. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.